Uh, we're going to call to order the Hennepin County Board of Commission. It is now 510. Uh, Indications will be given this uh, evening by Jamie Deloach. And then as far as for the lease and I pledge to leave the flag, if you'd all stand with us. Dear Lord, thank you for everyone that's gathered here with us this evening. Please be with us as we try to do your will, um, making our decisions, Lord. Also, please be with our world leaders during this time of uncertainty. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Approval. So we feel like the fees are, are 
way too much in these cases, so we were just trying to come up with something that was a, a lot more reasonable for those type fees. Uh, the second category is in the building permits, and what we were trying to accomplish here is we've seen recently people come in and drop off four or five or six sets of plans, and then they'll come back and say, well, we don't want to build those, we want to build another lot, and the staff's having to review those, and, and there's never a permit issue, so there's no fees for the review of it. Uh, so what the, the um, proposal there was is currently on residential is a $50 administrative fee plus the other fee that's based on square footage heated and unheated is to convert that $50 admin fee <clears throat> to a plan review fee that's payable at the time the plan is dropped off. So if you go all the way through and get your permit, there's absolutely no change in the total fee for a residential permit. You only have an increase if you drop off a set of plans and never act on the permit then it's the $50 plan review fee. Uh, so we also added a fee onto the commercial, which I believe was about 150 I think, um, because that review was a little more detailed. Now, it would be in addition to the fees currently charged on, on the commercial. And then lastly, is in water and sewer. Uh, back in 2004, there were some changes in those fees and subsequently a meeting that was held and those fees were kind of reverted back to what they were prior to that. Uh, in listening to the motions, uh, I think they were reverted. It, it was, it's a little unclear to staff as exactly whether we reverted everything back to what it was or just the actual water and sewer rates and or um, uh, deposit charges. So what you're left with is what the changes were to that fee schedule at the time, and that's in the reconnection fees, uh, 70 to 75 and 150 there, going to 30 and 60, uh, and, and then the after hours calls. So what we're proposing now is just to relook at those you know, again and see what they would be. In general, we're all we're reducing all those fees, with the exception of adding uh, uh, fee an item for uh, temporary water service where you can come up with your realtor you just get 10 days of service and there's no charge per gallon rather than establishing a, you know, and then paying the fee. So that, that's the high level view. We'll get into whatever question y'all have. I do like the idea of uh, this committee be coming now so about the 30, 150, 60, I think those are much more reasonable fees. Uh, those cover our call out cost, I assume. We get, if somebody gets called out in the middle of the night, we get a two hours for a guarantee. Um, what's the, what's yeah, the, not, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't know that we have a whole lot in the middle of the night for that kind of stuff. There's probably more after hours here, just after five. Or something. Well, I think that's what we're doing. After hours, yeah. we give them, that should cover our employee costs, I think. Yeah, support the thing. That's really what you want to do. Oh, I'm sorry. We missed animal control. Animal control is in here, too. I forgot mm -hmm. all about that. So that, you know, I'll explain what that's about. We're at that point. I'm sorry, I forgot all that. If you have any questions, I'll come back to it. Enjoy the finish explanation of all the facilities. In animal control fees, we were trying to age those up slightly um, to be able to uh, spay and neuter these animals. So, in, in our it's the opinion of our current director, uh, that, that that's a valuable thing to do. We don't send them out spay and neuter. They're, they're reproducing they're coming right back into the facility. So we're trying to edge that up a little bit and it will not cover the complete cost of it, but it'll help offset that cost to some degree. Uh, you all may recall we got a grant here six months ago, four months ago to help in spay and neuter. Hope has helped us do some of that as well. So there are some matching partners in this, but the reason for that increase is to try to spay and neuter all the animals that come through there. And that level of rescue group, I believe, is affordable. From what I understand, the, the animal advocates are, are very supportive of doing this. Uh, in, in fact, they originally wanted a lot bigger fee increase, and we didn't feel like it would be supportive. So we kind of split the baby in the middle uh, of what we thought we could get to uh, based on surrounding counties and fees and so on. Yeah, did you say um, the director? Yes, ma'am. And, and she actually asked for this change. Uh, to, to I, I told her, and she said that if you're going up 
to uh, on the cats is sixty dollars and the dogs is seventy five now. I mean that that doesn't correspond to what we got on here, but I I think it's too high anyway. We we neared it what uh, at a hundred dollars of euthanized what last month. According to our report, I mean we need to do something. We need to do something to get rid of these dogs and cats without euthanizing. But I don't know what he charges per animal euthanizer, but I know he doesn't do it for anything. I don't know what all is two hundred dollars. What all does his two hundred dollars cover, uh, Joanna? When he comes. Did you know right off hand? That's what it costs right now, two hundred dollars for euthanizer. Yeah. I don't know, I think he just comes and for his hours of work he just euthanizes whatever he whatever he got. 35, 40 dollars the time. Yes, sir. His fees are based on him coming. It's not based off of a per animal. So it just depends on how many we have and what our limits are at the time as to how many he does. But it is a fixed fee that we get each month. Oh, okay, so it's not a per hour. It's a fee for so much per month. We have 10, we have 15, we have 30. It's the same. Dollar cost two hundred. He comes. But he comes every. He comes every week, right? He comes every week. And he costs two hundred dollars every time he comes. <clears throat> yes. So we we euthanizing a bunch of animals. A hundred last month. I mean, just like we can do something to get somebody to uh, adopt them other than going up on the adoption fee. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know that they. I know that they're talking about rescue organizations and getting them adopted. I feel like we're probably doing. I'd have to see the numbers again, but um, she has worked, the director's worked really hard with the current rescue groups to where, I mean, I'll see on Facebook, they'll come and, and they, they just, they'll rescue 50 going to Atlanta, you know, right now. So our problem is that we're getting too many, and I don't know how to stop that. I mean, we're just getting hundreds and hundreds. People right. decide to just drop their animals at, at, the, at the county and let the county break deal with it. I think one of the pieces here is, number one, I believe there's some state law that dictates that, they, that the spade and neuter is supposed to be done. And what the issue is, is once they leave, the laboriousness of then checking up to make sure that that's done. And I think what she was trying to do is reverse that and say, let's do it before they leave. We'll use part of the money that we're receiving already from the grant, along with a little bit of this, if we can edge that fee up along with some other funds that we have available to go in and take care of it because it's taking their time and effort to then try to go back and make sure this is done and we're not sure that we're complying with all of the state laws that exist to ensure that that's done. So all these, all these cats and dogs, did they adopt that they spayed or neuter before they leave there? They're supposed to, they're not currently. Yeah, which is which is probably why we're getting more and more of it. It is, and I would say this this report that you got in front of is not a good one to look at because we have hoarding case. So they brought in several hundred animals, you know, that came in at one time, and there was some parvo in the mix of it. So this particular month is not a good representation, like Commissioner Dolan said. They've been doing a very good job of moving these animals out of here. This one doesn't necessarily reflect that because of the hoarding. I mean, we got chickens and guinea pigs. Pigs on this well, list, so. Yeah, but on this was the last month, it was uh, about 100. I understand, but it was because they had a hoarding case and they didn't have room to hold them. They, they kind of had to do what they had to do. So normally when they have less animals come in and not 100 at a time. How many came in at one time on hoarding? Do you know? I think it was over 100. It was 110, 120 at one time on hoarding so, case. So I think that's part of the criticism that we've heard is you get 110 animals in, in one room. And then all of a sudden they have a car and everyone in the world stay in the year. I think that is understandable. Yeah. And in fact, she had all of those lined up to go to a rescue, and, and it all got pulled back at the last minute because of the parvo issue. So these numbers, again, are not real reflective of what they have been doing up there for a month. You got pulled back because of what? Parvo. You can bring it up. It's a okay. disease and dogs. Yeah, disease and dogs. Disease and dogs. Yeah. That runs That's high contagious. So when that happened, a lot of the rescue said we don't we, we won't take them because it could infect their other you know animals. But 
she she had a great deal of lined up to go out that ended up not happening because of that. So well, I, I, mean, I know that I know that our animal shelter from where it was a couple of years ago to where it is now is night and day way way improved and just so much better. So I, I just think it's uh, highly easy to have some criticism at a case in a situation like when it's just happened, but I don't think it's necessarily fair. Well, I know the director and Hoda. I know that they want to reduce utilization as much as possible. So I can't imagine, you know, they would be advocating for something. That yeah, they're, they're very supportive of this. And in general, like Joanna said, it is the law. You know, as they go out of the shelter, they're supposed to be spayed in or neuter. It's just following up on that. And if you, even if you followed up on it and found out that they hadn't done it, what do you really do about it? You know, so the, yeah. the solution is to do what they're already in the facility. Right? And, and the part of receiving you know, that grant. If I'm not mistaken, then that paperwork was to have a process in place to ensure that this is being done. Okay. So it is six dollars. They get one that's going to be neutered. Is that right? Spade or spade? Correct. Either one, yes, sir. That's correct. And have all its vaccinations. Correct. <clears throat> you know, probably if, uh, if someone's not willing to pay sixty dollars to have vaccinations and neutering. They're not going to bring that the judge, but they're probably not going to just, you know, sponsor the owners and take care of it. That would not be to, too much to expect. Well, again, they only cost twice this amount is what the panel had to split yeah. off, you know, thought was fair. And we're just, again, trying to split the baby, honestly. You know, I understand what you're saying, you know, how high is too much to get <clears> out, but then what's <clears> responsible <throat> in, in doing so as well. And the greater doesn't feel this is going to be any way to get people from adopting dogs. Or, no, actually this was, was a request of hers and, and we tried to, to look at all the pieces and look at what level we could set it at to help with the cost and yet not harm us as far as... It might have hurt you because if I knew already got the vaccinations done, I might be more willing to do that. Well, well, that was her well, and the, I'm sorry, the, the people that work so diligently on behalf of these animals, they are happy to them and they're in favor of it. They're, do, they're trying to do what they think is very best. Um, they're in support of it. They believe that it's the best thing because they work night and day to get the animals placed somewhere. And if you were desirous of actually having your animals stay neutered, it's going to cost you a lot more than this if you take them to the vet and have it done. So that's the other way to look at it is if you're going to do the right thing, legal pet ownership, this is actually a deal for you. I know I have a problem with that. Baby. Baby is new, I mean $60. But I think she told me they get $75. Well, it is. It's $60 plus rabies, and you see the rabies is $15. Okay. So it how is $75. How much is the rabies? $15. You're right. Correct. So it would be $75 and $60. Total. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. That is correct. All right. And, and yes, they would have their shots and be spayed new at the time that they're receiving. All right. Okay. But it said plus. It's only $60, so it would be, be $70. That's right. 15 to, to feed right below the rabies. And we were trying to get this process in place so that we're compliant with the grant so that going into this next year, we have budgeted funds to, to amply take care of what needs to be taken care of. Those of you don't want to Okay, under building application piece, something that I wanted to, I wanted to actually do a little example because I want to be sure I understand the way that the wording is on the commercial building permit. Mm -hmm. Plan review fees do when plans are submitted. 150 plan review fee, I get that way. Seven dollars per one thousand of construction value. So they're going to estimate at the time in the paperwork what the construction value cost is. They're going to say we think it's going to cost us five hundred thousand dollars or a million or what? Um, How that work? Well, that's the way it's current. That, that's not changing. That is current in, in your fee schedule. The only thing we had is the 150 plan review fee. Um, I, I believe they're asking for values as you come in. And, and, and again, this is a commercial building, so most people got an architect or somebody on board that can give those values. So and the only thing that we're not doing right now is that initial $150 plan review fee? That is correct. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. All right, on the other one, the plan review fee is due. Plans are submitted. Um, that's under one or two families. Dwellings. And that's where some people were bringing plans as an example um, and then never building. So, what you're going to charge the fee right up front if they bring a plan, and then if they go to build the house, deduct it from the, what the 
Yeah, correct. And, and okay. right now it's a fifty dollar admin fee plus yep. the fee. So we're just charging that from well, it's addition to you're not doing a deduction. It would be the same exact fee. It would be a fifty dollar plan review instead of a fifty dollar admin. The okay. only way it would be different if you drop off a set of plans and then didn't build it, you lose your fifty dollars. Then we get the and, and, and we're not seeing sure. I want to be sure you were charging it. You weren't waiting and billing it later and hoping to get it. I want to no. make sure you were billing it correct. and yeah. charging yeah. it at the moment they were bring it. Correct. Before plans were reviewed. And, and we're not seeing it on, you know, the Johnny Citizen who wants to build a house. It's track builders that bring in 15 and then change their mind, you know, get a different full planner. I just want to be sure we were charging it up front because yes, I, I recognize in things in the past that we've waited and billed, we might not. Right. Right. So I have a question for you, Paul. Mm -hmm. well, Mr. Jones just asked you on the commercial side, if I came in and wanted to build a commercial before this change and I brought plans, what would I pay right now? You'd pay the $7 for $5. And no $150. That's right. right. I'm not sure why we had the $150 because $7 or $1,000 is pretty expensive already. But I, I thought maybe the $150 is if you bring a plan and we're going to give you a preliminary view of it. But if we move forward to seven, I'm confused why we had one fifty. I get them residential because people just drop them off. And, and Is it the same scenario in your mind that sometimes you're reviewing it ahead of time and it never happens? Probably not as much on the commercial side. I think on the commercial, you, you're pretty much invested by the time you bring the seven plans in. So I, I doubt it that we see it as much. It's really on the residential side. Commercial yes. review is a little more intense. And, and that's the reason for it being high for life saving. Right. I mean, the fees are pretty strong. You have $3,000 dollars times $3,200. If you plan to add 150 dollars I'm not sure. I'm getting all the residential, but you don't get it. And you're not getting anything on them. So when the commercial plan comes in, you cut that up front when it first comes in by now, currently? No. So you would do the whole thing. So really what you're looking at more is just cutting on the front end. That's the real issue. For, for the plan review, correct. And separating the plan review from um, from the permit fee. And, and, and again, on, on single family residential, it's easy. We're not increasing it one dime as long as you pick up, you know, go through the process. It is an increase on the uh, commercial. And, and I don't think this is big of a deal, honestly. I don't think there's many people that don't follow through the process. So. If they are paying $7 a mm -hmm. square foot, they're not going to fight about the plan no, but, but my question is, well, some of them will be collecting the, the past, you want to collect the commercial fee up front, you might put several hours of engineers reviewing and, and then getting up and forward. So right. now we're going to collect it all up front. You collect the 150 up front. Not the set. Not, not the set. You want to collect the plan review and then the other permit. Correct. You don't want to pay that. There's no way you're paying $7 at plan review if you never build it. Like, you're not doing that. Okay. Correct. You don't, if, yeah, if you drop off a set of plans and never built it, you paid 150 the remaining fee is, is when you come get the permit you're paying that fee. That's what I want to clarify. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. How about the, uh, on the top of page uh, number four, there's three of them up there together and they, there's three of them, they, they don't make sense. One of them is a demolition permit, $50. I mean, you demolition, what, what, you, what you're tearing down. But you got a little shed and you, I mean, who, who don't do that? Who don't come up here and get a permit? So I'll leave it on the books. You got a demolition permit or relocation. You're relocating what? We, Let me we, give you a possible example. We went over place. this. We went over this last year, and I asked the question: What? What are you relocation? You relocation your house? You reload? You move it out of one house into another? What does that mean? Nobody knows, but they said leave it on there. We might need it for something. Okay, a couple of questions. So, so there's another one. There. There's three of them. And windows, if you don't replace your windows, you're going to pay $50 administration fee, $5 per $1,000 in estimated cost. I mean, they don't make good sense to me, so I think all three of those need to be struck and all together in its entirety. I want to get a response on what the, each one of those are for, the demolition fee. Um, and what, what, is that, what is that for? Building demolition, you know, it's probably more on the commercial side than anything, you know, if you just tear it down the house. Have we ever got $50 for it? I, I don't know, sir. I'd have to ask the building department. I know. Just like me. Well, you just look right over and I'm going to do the mobile home. It tore it down if it was too old to be moved. I had to pay a demolition fee so that they were aware and make sure, I guess, the site was maintained and the canister was brought out of that appropriate. And I can see there's occasions when you want to control how something's demolition, particularly in the neighborhood. 
And the other things I'm not but sure. But yours is on your land. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. But anyway, the relocation permit, I don't agree with that. Somebody wants to put new windows in the house. How much money would you let that $50 plus $5 per thousand in estimated cost? Has anybody ever done that? I doubt it. So what I'm saying is, why have it on there if it's never used and nobody's going to do it? Anyway. Which is a good question. We're not going to apply it and collect it. Yeah, why, why would nobody you? knows about it. They don't read this. They don't know nothing about it. Start with it. I got a building in my yard. I want to tear it down. I just tear it down. You know what I'm saying? You know, chicken house. If I have old chicken house, I want to tear it down. Are you making a mess? You get your demolition permit from Commissioner Oliver? I'm watching. <laughs> you can watch me all you want. That's why I'm like flying out here to photography for a year. <laughs> hey, I'm up the I, mean, I, mean, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer. If there are instances in which are we going out and, and checking to be sure that something's not being torn down that has asbestos and we're not following the right procedure? Or we're not, does it, I mean, if there's this response, let him know what it is. <laughs> Discuss this tonight, so I didn't ask that question. I'm mean, assuming you know that there'd be things we'd be probably disconnected from the building last year for some reason. I thought we were good with it. There was a reason we left it on there last year. That particular thing we took off, that particular thing, if I, I think I remember that, um, was he three, was opposed to it and we took it off, we just took it off. There were three or four things they were going to take off, but they didn't take these three off. We discussed them last year. So that's why you have to listen to the tape. Well, 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 Maybe get the three items that he's noted. Can we find what the correct answers are for those three items? Because that's a good point. Yeah. Is if yeah. there's yeah. asbestos in the building, we need to know about Nobody's it. Nobody's going to do it. Make sure power is disconnected. Yeah, I'll follow up on it. So, so he, 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 $20,000, you know, it's $5 something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you can move it tonight, or we can let them try to get some answers to see if there's any reason for it. I mean, I think that you should be in there. If I have all this stuff in there, if it's no good to anybody, which is, that doesn't do the county any good whatsoever. I think your point's well taken. I was just saying, give them an opportunity to look and see if there's any reason. Did we, we use surrounding counties? Say that because I don't know, but I'm pretty certain we've issued demolition permits and 
if they've been on there forever and a day, then how do you feel about leaving them on there and then bringing it up at another meeting about whether you want to keep still keeping them on there? Maybe on this one. That's fine with me. I don't care. I just want to let you know what you're doing. Okay. If you want to bring it back up another day, next week, we'll do that too. Make a good time to check out. Okay. We won't have to save it. We just put it on the agenda for next week. Well, yeah, we can. Matter of fact, we can address it. You're right. Toss it in the wood. You get it. Look for any fees that are not assessing and building the site for free that Mr. Lepers look it up. Then they move 10 and 12. Okay. So those three are definitely going to be. Mr. Chairman, if I may, while you guys were discussing, I went into the system and I looked at the site plan and I looked at the I think relocations would be less uh, frequent. I think that's like they moved the house from here. Those probably aren't charged off. The demolition, I'm pretty certain we do issue those. Uh, windows, I don't really know, but I think like Commissioner Keith said, I think we have a, a duty to actually inspect those by the government. It is, I think, why that's in there. So I'll be more than happy to get the information for y'all. I know we discussed a year ago. I feel like it was the reason they were left there. I think Jimmy answered those questions, but I'll, I'll be glad to, to do so. Well, to some extent, if you take the theory that the whole entire reason for inspections is to try to help ensure that the citizens have things done properly, and then we're that, that safeguard of that, then that theory would hold true about we need to inspect windows after they're installed because God knows we've seen windows installed upside down. And um, they have a refrigerator, so, you know, um, there's a reason for it. If, if the theory holds that the demolition permit, I wouldn't have no problem with that. If we went to tear down this building or do well, they'd get a permit. A lot of people will follow. Uh, this relocation of the residents, I don't see no purpose for that in there whatsoever. Again, for your information, Mr. Chairman, I'm looking in the system. I'm looking from May of 2015 to 2017 looks like January. There's about 18 window permits. Yeah, permit. Yeah, I would again okay. if, the, if the board wants to discuss other fees or in a motion that these three items ought to be touched tonight, just because they're already part of our billing process, and let them review and give an explanation for those services and any others we may or may not need to move. And let's put it on next month's agenda, next week's agenda, and, uh, and yeah. so. Okay. We'll do that. Okay. So any of the fees you want to look at on that, that the recommended, the red line fees on here is changed. I actually like the temporary service. I thought I saw the reduction in a couple of utility things were important. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Look at that. Do you have any discussions on the fees? Are you okay with the fees that they recommend? I'll turn it on if so or it's in motion.
There was some discussion after their presentation of substituting recreation in the regional, but they recommended Clancy Morgan Recreation Complex. Clarence spoke at the end of the meeting. He suggested that it should be the Effingham Regional Complex. He recommended put on there. He expressed his eyes to see that Effingham County Regional Complex. Uh, the commissioners from discussion, <coughs> one particularly that shared and saw a lot of monogamy, maybe Effingham County Recreational Park, but then he could clear it see more than complex. That was another idea. Once again, you could substitute regional to like that urban recreational. So you have Effingham County Recreational Park, Clancy see more than complex, and I believe uh, Mr. Gilmar came back up and said that they were trying to embrace that concept too, as long as uh, Mr. Morgan was on the survey of the sign. Uh, some other ideas that you wanted to abbreviate would be planning some more of the complex and put underneath it every young county recreational park to do that. Um, if you want to associate just the name with the park of the uh, honor east. Uh, that's the one I don't know. I just want to make sure it's not like this picture here. Where we need all those two marking signs for the name. I mean, I want Clarence's name to be on there as well. I think every name needs to be on there as well. I want to make sure we don't get it too long. Well, one problem with that particular sign is the layout where every single word in that is capital bold, same size. That's a sign layout. Let's well, see, like your second picture you had there, maybe it'd be welcome. Players you want in complex, Effingham Recreation Department, or Effingham County Recreation Department underneath. Both things are on there, I'm not sure. Yeah. It wasn't clarified, or I don't remember how it was said where Effingham did it to be, give the name of it, but it didn't matter. First, for Googling purposes, is what it said in the last meeting. Well, I kind of remember, so that's Mill Creek, they said if you Google um, Statesboro, Mill Creek come up, of course, the complex, Mill Creek comes up, so it'll come up, probably if you Google it. If you notice, Google Creek. No, if you, if you Google Statesboro, Creek, Mill Creek will come up, they said last week. Well, that's how, that's how they've got it in the search engine. Mm -hmm. Somebody in IT can Google Yes, sir. Craig Johnson, uh, Recreational Chairman of the Board. Uh, I compiled these these pictures just to kind of give us an idea of what other counties um, have done. Is it the ones we're looking at? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, and most of them have the honoree's name first. Um, I knew there was some question about uh, finding the facility, and like uh, Phil said, that you know you. You Google Mill Creek, well, it's going to bring up uh, both county recreation. Um, the other two parks, or three parks we have in the county, is considered uh, the annex at 119. We got Pine Nor and then we got Sand Hill. There is no Effingham to it. Someone, um, and I apologize for my address, I've got to go coach a ball game in about an hour. Um, the When we play district games um, and we say we qualify for state, we receive a packet. Um, all the information is in that packet addressing everything of the host county. Um, if someone wants to host a, a tournament, baseball or softball, um, the organizer is going to have all the information and he's going to farm it out to all his teams. So the, the, the Googling part of, of where this park is, uh, we're not going to run into someone coming down the road and say they want to Google to see where they can go play ball for the day. Um, so, you know, Phil made a good point on that, that, you know, you're going to, it's going to tie you into to the recreation website anyway that's going to give you the, the physical address. Um, pretty much all these, and these were just, just three I found. I'm, I'm kind of like Jamie. I mean, we, we would need a billboard uh, for this one. That's just a, a, a mouthful. Um, 
with the uh, Swainsboro Manual County. Um, I kind of like the the the, uh, the Ed Smith complex, um, and it says you know by day recreation. Uh, uh, the wording I like is, um, and you can add welcome, Clarence C. Morgan um, complex, F and M County Recreation and Parks, um, because we are going to have technically a park you know inside the facility uh, that we had a workshop on not long ago. Um, and you have that. Yeah, and, and Clarence had said something about regional. Uh, I don't know how much that word means. Um, the uh, the picture with the um, the Callaway complex. At, at this one with the uh, with the sign, I mean, uh, that would be a, a wish list. Um, uh, it could be something that could be added later if we can get a uh, construction crew to at least go ahead and put us in conduit. We're going to need lighting around the sign anyway. Um, what signage we do use around the county to promote different activities that's going on or just billboard signs used with uh, highlighted letters. Um, so they're kind of Cheap's not a good word, but basically that's what they are. So this this sign, if, if it could be you know in the future, um, put up there for that. Uh, there could be several county activities that would be posted on that sign, kind of like what the city of Springfield has here at the corner of 119 and 21. Thank you much. Yes, sir. I'm summarizing. You like the Tennessee Morgan Complex, if you can have recreational park
If you want to hear anything much, except that you want to have clients in the morning car parks, they can go to the station. I don't want to say, I'm not making sure they can't be recognized. I'm not going to do that. It makes sense to me. So let's decide what words we want to sign. You want a motion to clients in the morning car parks, if you can get a recreation report. Is that agreeable to all? That's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah, yeah, it's too long. Somebody, if somebody feels that, let's figure out the report that needs to come off. Let's, let's figure it out today. Well, that's all I was trying to say, Mr. Jones. If we could be flexible on that, and can and want it on the sign for Love County and Morgan. So you might be okay later if the sign designer said just put the words of Ham County underneath? Because, see, I don't want to leave that ambiguous. Yeah, but yeah, if we come back and we look at it and say, hey, that's good, put that, put that sign designer. Just well, saying, you got to approve the sign design. It's coming back for Just saying, as a possibility, just trying to understand. Mm -hmm. then it might just say Clarence E. Morton Complex, and then it may just say Ethan County. Could if you like the design better. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Well, you can put an emotion, just name it, but the sign design, just put an emotion that the sign design is going to come back. The sign design is going to come back. I'm trying to get the motion so that everyone's in it, and if everybody doesn't care how it's in it, and they want to work that out later, I'll, I'll do that. I'm just trying to get clarification because I don't want to make it without it in it. Yeah, I would give, give the design people some flexibility to do some best. Give us three or four options. Okay. And that's all I'm suggesting. We can do. Okay. So you're ready to make a motion? I don't have to get one to make it, but I'm glad to make it. Do you need a motion? Do you want me to throw one out there? I'll throw one out there and see if you're okay with it. I just want to, I mean, Forrest, you're good, because I know you said before you want to make sure every name was in the name. It was just on. So it could be Clarence and Morgan Complex, and that we are certain that Effingham County is in agreement that Clarence and Morgan Complex is designated somehow on this sign to be determined at sign design. Is that a motion everybody's acceptable with? Sounds good. That's my motion. I'll say it. We have a motion from Mr. Jones that says F, uh, the, the sign name will be Clancy Morgan Complex with Effingham County being somewhere on the sign. Is that correct? Now the first and the second are Mr. Deloach and then the sign folks for clarity will take that information and give us three or four or five designs. And that is, I'm sure we can all prove how big and how small the tuning is. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to come back and we'll prove that. So a motion and second to vote all favor. All opposed? All opposed? All opposed? All opposed? Then I'll pass it. Okay. The big issue are easy for us. The small issues are hard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we have a name to sign. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all your work. Appreciate it. I'm number two under the business consideration to approve to be uh, issued sealed bids 17014 with a minimum price of ten thousand dollars per acre. Good evening, Fiona Charlton, purchasing agent. Board surplus various parcels of land at their meeting on October the 4th, 2016. A sealed bid was issued for four tracts of the surplus land, but as no bids were received, staff would like to drop the minimum price per acre from $15,000 to $10,000 and reissue the sealed bid. Staff recommend alternative number one. Any questions? Any discussion? Make a motion to approve order number one. Okay. First, Mr. Roper, second, uh, Mr. Keeper. Uh, approve order number one. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. And carries. Thank you. Item three consideration to approve to award a contract and issue notice to proceed for 2017 road service. Requests were received to resurface approximately 8.46 miles on 17 county roads. An invitation to bid was issued and advertised in the usual places and sent to no vendors. Four bids were received with a low bidder being Sykes Brothers for a total bid price of $1,300,804.87. 
Sykes Brothers responded in accordance with the invitation to bid and provided the required bid form. And as the county attorney has reviewed and approved the contract and funding is available through SPLOST, staff recommends alternative number one. Any questions? Any questions or discussion? Have we decided to run the report? <clears throat> Not for road resurfacing countywide. We use them, they put the diesel lane at the wall right in 21. You know, something that was two jobs that didn't at the same time. Where are they at? 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 They're local, I believe it's Savannah. They are local. Right. 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 They did do something else. And something else they did for them. I can't think what we've never used them on big resurfacing projects. It's been smaller type things they do.
consideration item number five to approve a resolution to appoint Stacy Scott to the Board of Assessors for the second district. Okay, so Mr. Chairman, um, Tim Matthews was reappointed to the Assessors Board back in January 2017. He has submitted a letter of um, resignation to that board. Um, this was an appointment for the second district. We have been presented with an application that is in your material for Stacy Scott to fulfill um, that term, which will expire in March of 2021. It was just um, Tim Matthews was my appointee for the second district, and he has been serving as a chairman. He has put in a lot of hours, a lot of hard work, and has been greatly appreciated. And I have to like, give him a um, personal thank you at some point if possible. Um, but I will say this at this point in time, once he, he let me know that he was going to be moving to the state of Florida and gave me his resignation, um, I was excited about this particular person being able to get appointed because there is nobody that I can imagine in Evigan County that has more um, job experience, um, training, and has expertise in the field as this particular um, woman that does reside in the first district, also, although she's being appointed from the second, which does meet the um, qualifications for it, actually works in the um, assessor's office in Chatham County right now and is overall the personal property and commercial. Um, so she's very knowledgeable and should be a huge asset to us as an Any discussion? I'd like to make a motion since it's from the district. I'd like to make a motion that we approve Stacy Scott to the Board of Assessors. Second. Motion Mr. Johnson, second Mr. Loper. All in favor at this point say that. Uh, no. All in favor is no. She is a point. Thank you. Number six. Uh, number six out of the new item. We add this to the agenda because they are going to need um, new surveillance and meeting with the court engineers, I believe. Part of the next meeting. And so, kind of bring it to speed and toss you have any idea of new surveillance. It's uh, on Mountain 21. They have some permits that need to be extended to allow them to develop and do some things that we do for our county industrial wise and residential and so forth. And they asked us to, uh, if we would mind sharing a letter with uh, the Corps relating to the hurt caused to our county. Financially, I guess that we made down there and thought about we could use that link to loop and done some other things, but we best anticipating this uh, development that didn't take place. So we have about $6.3 million best in that area. We um, need the water there and plus, plus the lost interest, plus the lack of water. That's why. So that's what we're trying to communicate here. If we can show that our taxpayers have been, uh, would be harmed if this developer is not before, Healthy Oregon, I understand. So we've got the letter I've covered with uh, Toss. I think we believe this is an accurate representation of our situation. Yes, sir. Attorney has read it. He says, as long as the information is accurate, he's okay with it. And if you don't take a minute to read it, if you haven't read it, read it.
generalities of putting it, turn around, we can tell them this will take one acre or half acre, and this is what it looks like. So we're currently working on getting that design together so that we can move to the next step and actually uh, negotiate you know, what it would take, what it's needed to be simple, how we move forward. Uh, Chamber of Commerce was saying we do this save the date will be Thursday, June 8th, start at 6, and then uh, this year, August 24th and 25th, the Chamber will again do the FEM County Community Leadership Retreat at the King and Prince on St. Side. And last year they did not, this year they'll do that. So that's August 24th and 25th. For the next two items, there's a uh, map at the back of your, the, the last two pages of your material there. We had two different people that have either called up or found somebody, you know, staff or come, come up here recently expressing interest in a uh, property that the county owns wants to purchase that. Uh, the first one is a portion, well, I guess it's an unnamed road between Arlington and Fenway. There's a a person that owns property adjacent to that would like to have a portion of it. it, it there are parcels that, uh, quite frankly, I don't know how you access them out, you know, that, that are served by that unopened portion of the roadway. Uh, taking a piece down the middle may cause some access issues at some point. <clears throat> they asked that, you know, we, when we bring it to you, you know, we don't like to have an answer not to to look at it. And then the last one are and I don't know if it's one parcel or two, because I haven't spoken with these people directly, but it's adjacent to the Tuppy King boat ramp. We own property on either side of that particular parcel, and it's across the, the creek or the peninsula there. Mr. Stubbs, the It's on the other side of the, okay. the creek. Mr. Curzon, he called me yesterday and, and talked to you about it. Um, I just told him in the past, we had talked about there's different parcels that we have on our books that we had discussed in the previous retreat. We were thinking about possibly doing an auction at some point, but then when we have parcels that have a particular interest, you know, it may be a different store where they go ahead and do our own process. But I thought about I was going to bring it up tonight, which I'm glad it's already on the list to, to discuss, but he didn't seem he wasn't in extreme hurry to do it. He just said he would like to in this particular parcel i'm not sure what use we would have for you know it, it's across the river it's not so much whatever piece comes off of that but it's across the river uh, from the actual boat ramp itself the again the, the one prior to that is an unopened right away maybe a little more difficult to dispose of and like I said, you don't have to and look for an answer tonight. I just feel that they asked, so we told them we bring it up, and there's the map to what it looks like, and we can deal with it going forward. <coughs> the, the last question you have here. So we own all the, all the area of the blue? We, we own not only the blue outline, but the actual parcel in between, which is the boat ramp. You know, we own the other side of the creek, too. You, you can kind of see the ramp on there in the dock. And I believe in conversation with RC, he, Mr. Corsi may have expressed interest in obtaining that the portion that we own of that parcel across the creek as well. So it'd be one contiguous piece. Again, I haven't spoken with him, so I, you know, I know he's interested in some land across there. How would that, going back to the, the, the right way, I assume you have to abandon it. I would assume so as well. We probably had the first of the title search on it to make sure it's unopened. Do we actually own it? You know, is there legal ownership there? Uh, and then, yeah, I think we have to abandon it. And again, and what is the procedure? Does does everybody joining it have a claim to a portion of it's it? It's supposed to go back to the parcel from which it was taken from, which means you have to do the title work to see where it actually came from. And then if that person's not uh, there, you know, like because they've sold off all the property, I think it goes to the people. That, Adjacent to it, right? So you, know, you, you have some issues in doing it. It's not yes. as easy as just saying, "Yeah, we want to get rid of that particular." Well, I, mean, I, I, I like the idea of getting, you know, have, not have the county on the property. It doesn't need. It doesn't need you know, well, well, in that case, doing it properly. There's parcels that access that unknown. Well, that's what I mean. We'd be taking their access away. Well, you have to prove that there's no public benefit. Correct. Yeah. 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 Yeah
like I said, that was a little more challenging. This one's pretty simple. I don't think we have any use for the peninsula. And if there's somebody that wants to get it, put it on the tax record, it, it probably makes a lot of sense to pursue, to pursue that. So it's about more properties with any access to that library. Matrix in there, yes. so we would think that you all want to be involved in that process as well as we 
interview them and ask them questions about certain parts of their proposal. Uh, and then we make the, the ultimate choice based on the results of those interviews. And if you want them to be there, that's fine. But my, my understanding from past RFPs we dealt with and probably hit the board as well, this was their opportunity to give their questions. Yeah. They're asking us to give answers back to them. And we're going to give all the, all of the same answers. I think it might cloud it to have six people who have more questions then. Yeah. You know, this is their opportunity. Well, technically, the questions are due. I mean, they yeah. can't technically ask anymore. Yeah. If you would be warned that they need their questions, we're going to give answers. We're going to do the form of so all the same. And we had a pre bid, and I guess generally my answer was I understand what you're saying, that makes sense, but I believe that you know, the board might give input. Like that. So, you know, we, they understand that I, I can't give my an answer to some of these things. So, Just bear in mind that if you go with the workshop, you'll probably have to do it around three because you have um, the meet and greet with the GCAS group um, on that day, on the 16th, at 4 30. So you need to do your workshop around 3 o'clock. GCAS, that um, 4-H or That's the year. 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 That's so you have to do 3.30 to 4.30 or? We'll have all the questions about my close of business tomorrow, so I can have them to you all, you know, close of business tomorrow. Uh, uh, but I mean, some of y'all, I'm just kind of thinking. If we can review them, it may not take. Yeah. Yeah, it's an hour, hour. Mm -hmm. If you've already reviewed them ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to do the 30 minutes that we had a review before, you know, at 4 o'clock, that, that push you. We got something? Yeah, I would just say to let them know that there's a workshop, because I wouldn't want one showing up, and then you let them speak. Yep. That's why I brought up the first place, because right. it's a public meeting, right. which we're just discussing that, and they are stakeholders. So even if they don't get to speak, because in a workshop, the public's not invited to speak unless they're told to, they'd at least be able to hear what we said. That, that's right, because if one shows up, you may ask them a question since they're here, and the others are going to think, well, why do we know about it? So that's a very good point. I would let them know that there is going to be a workshop, but you may want to let them know they're not going to be allowed to ask questions unless uh, you can do it. they're asked. It's 4 o'clock, okay, for a workshop, and we can do it. Thank you, sorry. Uh -huh. I can see it taking, and just there's some questions about recycling that may take a little longer because it's based on the market trends and what's out there. Uh, in other words, some of the things they ask, like if there's unforeseen regulatory things that come down the pike and later, is there any opportunity to renegotiate the contract? The things that none of us see today. Uh, well, I'm going to just do the 3.30 and we get done early. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. local yeah. 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 So, I don't have no problem with 3.30. Yeah. Now, it may be a question. Is there any response to the agenda items so we have to meet early and have a discussion on the RFP? Because if we ever decide we want to approve them or not, in addition to RFP, why can't it be an agenda item that I have an extra meeting shortly? Why can't it not be an agenda item when it's a question? Why can't it be an agenda item? It could be a discussion item on the agenda. I think it could be. Just put it on the agenda, and I say why not. Yeah, when I come to 3.30, we can do a discussion. Let's do that. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Appreciate it. Good. Have a discussion. No. At 4.30, we're still going to be great. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Anything else, thoughts? No, sir. Anything from the other staff? Back to the commissioners.
Yeah, didn't we decide to go in and, and do that? Wow. I thought it was in the budget already. We, we, when we said it was in 2018 budget. Well, I thought the last thing we said we were going to try to discuss it, try to make it happen if we could, but I don't know where that I think that's what we left it. We were going to look to put it in the 2018 budget and the board. We didn't want to see that in there. Is that what you yeah. meant? Yes, sir, that's right. I mean, it, it will be in. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it will be as included in a request in the budget that ultimately you all approve. So, yes. I agree with that. It's going to be very beneficial for us.